This is Dr. Mimi Lam, and I would like to explain to you an interesting disorder called hungry bone syndrome that can develop after parathyroidectomy. The pathophysiology of renal bone disease is reviewed in detail on another video, but the key elements are impaired phosphate excretion leading to hyperphosphatemia and decreased synthesis of 125-dihydroxyvitamin D3 with resultant hypocalcemia, stimulation of parathyroid hormone secretion, and reabsorption of bone. This, along with decreased bone formation due to decreased 125-D3 levels and increased bone dissolution due to chronic acidosis, results in dysregulated bone formation or renal osteodystrophy. Treatment for osteodystrophy includes phosphate binders for the hyperphosphatemia, calcium supplements for the hypocalcemia, calcitriol for the decreased levels of 125-dihydroxy-D3, calcium-sensing receptor agonists to decrease PTH secretion, and pretty much as a last resort, subtotal parathyroidectomy. The consequences of severe chronic hyperparathyroidism, which are also the indications for subtotal parathyroidectomy, include severe symptomatic hypercalcemia, progressive debilitating bone disease, extraskeletal calcification, pruritus or itching unresponsive to medical therapy or dialysis, and otherwise unexplained symptomatic myopathy. So, as you can see, hyperparathyroidism plays a major role in renal bone disease. Here's a picture of what it does to bone. You can see that these multinucleated osteoclasts are eating away at the blue mineralized bone, creating innumerable little holes or lytic lesions, releasing calcium into the blood, and gradually weakening the skeletal structure. The released calcium can then combine with phosphate to produce extraskeletal calcifications, such as these deposits in the cornea and the conjunctivi, resulting in irritation and red eye, around the shoulder joint, and subcutaneously in this man's fingers. Following parathyroidectomy, the process is reversed, and instead of bone dissolving to release calcium and phosphate, there is remineralization of the many little lytic lesions, such as the tiny holes seen in this so-called salt and pepper skull, or in these demineralized femurs. As the damaged bone hungrily sucks up calcium and phosphate, the serum calcium and phosphate levels plummet, and hungry bone syndrome is the result. In order to understand this syndrome better, let's take a look at a patient of mine. This 59-year-old woman had been on dialysis for seven years and had been non-compliant with her meds, such as the phosphate binders and vitamin D supplements that we were just looking at on the bone disease diagram. She developed a rapid onset of weakness, such that over a period of days, she became unable to transfer from a wheelchair to her dialysis chair and could not walk but had to scoot along on the floor. Her serum calcium was 11.5 due to uncontrolled release of calcium from her bones, PTH 4,182 due to years of chronic stimulation of the parathyroid glands, ALKFOS 815, and she had clear indications for subtotal parathyroidectomy. In the operating room, her PTH fell dramatically to 32, and by the time of discharge, her serum calcium was down to 8.5. She was sent home on oral calcium and calcitriol, providing plenty of building materials for her bone disease to heal. However, two weeks later, her serum calcium was down to 6.6, .6, phosphate to 1.4, and PTH up to 140. On physical exam, she manifested Chvostek's sign, characteristic of hypocalcemia, in which tapping lateral to the cheekbone stimulates the facial nerve and results in twitching of the muscles of the cheek and mouth. She also told us that her family had not filled any of her prescriptions or given her any of her meds since discharge. So she was readmitted to the hospital and treated with oral calcium, calcitriol, 
and plenty of IV calcium gluconate, a total of 74 grams IV. Her serum calcium and phosphate levels quickly began to normalize, and over the next few months, her lytic bone lesions filled in, her strength returned, and she was able to maintain normal calcium and phosphate levels without oral supplements. So in summary, hungry bone syndrome is characterized by severe hypocalcemia and hypophosphatemia resulting from the repair of lytic bone lesions after parathyroidectomy. It occurs in up to 20% of post-parathyroidectomy patients and is treated by giving massive doses of supplemental calcium and calcitriol, IV and PO, to increase GI calcium and phosphate absorption and to increase bone formation. It can take months to resolve, but it does eventually get better.